Welcome back to Oracle of Ages. Today we're going to be taking on our first dungeon. We're going to burn right through it, as you said. That's right. Or into this little area and get some money. It's the period that really makes that funny to me. That's nice. I think that chest with the 30 rupees is your, hey, you should probably go buy a shield now if you haven't already. Pretty much. Let's go and point at him and laugh. <laughs> There's a dead body in the sea. Let's go look at it. <laughs> so, very kindly, the Mako tree points you in the cardinal direction of where the dungeon is, and that's about all the information you really need. Well, with the Zelda games on the Game Boy, you pretty much go to where you can't go any further, and then there's an item, so... In this case, it's trees that we burn with the seeds that the Maku tree gave us. So, there's some items that return from Link's Awakening, but there's also some new items in this game, and some are pretty good. The seed bag, I, I uh, love it and hate it. I like all the seeds, but switching them is kind of a hassle. Yeah, for these first seeds, you just equip them as is, but when we get more seeds, when you go into the start menu, you select the bag, and then you need to select the individual seeds. They'll fix that in the HD remake, I'm sure. <laughs> well, you never know. So those kids are too afraid to go into the graveyard. More for me. Can't have that heart piece yet. Maybe there'll be something there. That's worth it. So in Link's Awakening, you had magic powder that lit torches. This game's way to light torches makes a little more sense. Yeah. I mean, I guess any particles can technically catch fire. Asbestos. That's the magic powder. why when you sprinkle it on the chews, they freak out. <laughs> I can't breathe! Starting out easy. Ooh. That is not the dungeon, but it, I get the feeling that's a later dungeon. That's not even a dungeon. I get the feeling that it's not a later dungeon. No. But it is someone you can visit. Oh. This is the dungeon. Spirit's Grave. Always weirds me out. Yeah, the eyeballs follow you. It's kind of strange. I used to think that was significant. Yeah, right. But now it's just a design thing. What does it all mean? The puzzles in this range from just kill all the enemies to just move the block. Well, I mean, it's the first dungeon. Welcome to these things, though. Holy shit. <laughs> yep, that's one of the color-based puzzles that they carried over from the cancelled game. Some of them a little later get just tedious. I do like that the very first one is so simple, you just have to move it forward, and you have to push it forward in order to get through it, and just by doing that, it teaches you the mechanic. Though, with the design of this is a little silly, we need to kill all the enemies to get the key there, but it looks like that's a push block puzzle. It's deceiving. Quickly grabbing this. So, one thing I love about this game is that they got rid of that Hey, this compass has a new feature dialogue that played every single time you got one in Link's Awakening. I did not want to put up with that rope shit. So, most of the dungeons have secret rooms in them, and the prizes range from rings to gasha seeds to a bunch of rupees. Which is kind of nice. 
Nothing hugely necessary, though. I'll try to find them. They don't show up on the map, so... That's why they're secret. Then that's probably the only one I'll ever find. Sometimes I get lucky. As I go through these dungeons, I pick up more... Like, just because I sort of get turned around, I end up picking more keys than I need for where I am in the dungeon. It's always nice, because it cuts out the backtracking. But, I guess you're front-loaded with aimless wandering. This room's a little silly. You sort of have to block off that middle square. It's easy stuff. Could you solve the puzzle? <laughs> I do enjoy this, though. It's one of the things that I like about the Breath of the Wild shrines. They're simple little puzzles, but that just means that as you complete them, you think, oh good, I'm smart. And it builds up your enthusiasm. Yeah, I can see a parallel to the shrines with this game. The shrines were basically just miniature dungeons, but boiled down to individual puzzles. If only the names of all these dungeons gave you a clue about the puzzle. Spirit's Grave doesn't say much. Level 1, the block-pushing tomb. This room I don't need to come to yet. This is where the boss is. End the hand. This game likes to throw the wall masters and floor masters in the room right before the boss. Quite a lot. It's a one last... Uh, fuck you, you're going back to the beginning of the dungeon, thanks. <laughs> so it's a good idea to come down here. This is the mini-boss. He's a little obnoxious. He releases these smaller ghosts which latch onto you and prevent you from attacking. Now, I did it very quickly there. When you destroy all three of the little ghosts, he immediately respawns more. You need to attack him directly in order to kill him. Recording for a test, he he did a bit of a number on me. <laughs> Had a little trouble with that one, did you? So those moblins had boomerangs. Sadly, you're not going to get one in this game. No. Oh. I was going to say, at least we get a bow and arrow. Nope, we don't get one of those either. Nope. We get a gun. Seasons has a really wicked awesome boomerang, by the way. Look forward to that. Thank you for your patrons for making you go through this game first. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you either said uh, in the video or in between recordings. You really should have started with Seasons first. It has an easier difficulty curve. But here is our power bracelet. Absolutely. I do prefer Ocarina of Time's version, where it's just permanently equipped. Yeah. I don't know why they... It's... There's no... There's only two buttons on the Game Boy. So you can't have a lift the pots button like you could in the Super Nintendo ones. I guess. Ah, uh, that one you need to push. Don't break that one. And you do need the power bracelet to push them. One thing I like about this game, too, as an improvement is when you don't have the bracelet equipped and you try to push a pot or lift one, it doesn't give you a long-ass dialogue about why you can't lift it. <laughs> it just says, oof, that's heavy. I was going through thinking, just in case I missed something. Yeah. It's really just that one chest up there. But I got the boss key. I could go straight to the boss. And really, there's no reason not to. So I think I completed the dungeon before I got the map. Yeah. <laughs> this will be helpful. It is helpful. It tells me I'm done. Right. I do like this from the 2D games. When you complete the mini-boss, there's a little teleporter that takes you to the entrance. 
Yeah, it takes the sting of getting caught by a Wallmaster away a little bit. I'm ashamed to admit, one of them did catch me. Perfect. Now this guy's a little obnoxious. You need to attack him in order to get rid of his robe or whatever. You pick up the pumpkin and then the ghost jumps out. The ghost is what you actually need to attack. When you pick up the pumpkin and drop it somewhere, the ghost tries to run for it. Everything hurts you, so I cut this one really close. You can also throw the pumpkin at the ghost to damage it. Oh. Uh, I maybe should have done that. It keeps him from running through you. At least. There, I need that buffer. You got an instrument of the windfish, I mean an essence of time. You got a sneeze of time. So a lot of these essences have flavor text that really you could skip it because they don't mean anything. It's philosopher game developers trying to say things. Only so many letters in one dialogue box, guys. Who else could it be? <laughs> hey, it's me. It's me! I can also talk to you telepathically, isn't that great? We're gonna be the best spouses ever. <laughs> oh yeah, this one! New character! Here we go! There are a lot of things in this game that are tied to how many enemies you've killed, and this witch is one of them. So you usually see her when you leave a dungeon, because you've killed a bunch of enemies. When she flies in, just run into her face first. She drops a bunch of items, I think including some of your items, and then you have a little race to pick everything up. Right. She prioritizes the, the cooler stuff first, so you want to rush to that quickly. Don't grab what's near you. Go for the big stuff. Occasionally she'll drop rings, pieces of heart, and gasha seeds, too, so you want to grab those when you can. Probably the best thing, and certainly the one thing I need the most. She might also drop a red potion, which isn't an item you can use. It's basically an extra life. It's like having a fairy in a bottle in the other games. Now this ghost just confuses me. He's outside, but he's not really. He's underground. <laughs> yeah. But when you open the headstone and you talk to him, he's finally able to go outside. Right. I just wanted to talk to somebody. I'm so lonely. <laughs> oh no, I can't get through this block. But by rescuing him, we get the first item in a trading sequence. Because once again, what would Zelda be without a trading game? Now that text, though, that told me maybe I need to give it to that depressed kid. But no, I need to think of it as a clock. Go tell that filthy mailman to do his job. Well, first, I want that heart piece. You've earned it. And also plant something here, something I'm sure I'm going to forget about. Yeah, you won't get that one to the end of the game. And it's going to have five rupees in it. About how long does it take for a gasha tree to grow? So, that's the other thing that's tied to how many enemies you kill. Ah. I believe it's every 30 enemies you kill, they grow. Or is that what triggers the witch? One or, one or the other. They're definitely tied to how many enemies you kill. So if you want to grow seeds and you want to farm... Oh, 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 oh <laughs> yes! There we go. If you want to farm seeds, your best bet is to kill a bunch of enemies. Less yes. Spider zoo. Smarties. Wait. <laughs> this guy's the best. That joke was against my religion. <laughs> Never mention chocolate to me again. 
Oh, you almost killed it. Okay, so it, it's less enemies to make the witch appear, but more enemies to make a nut grow. Oh, actually, that was a tree that I planted in the past. Yeah, time has no meaning to gacha trees. Oh. You can collect the nut in any time period. Doesn't matter. The know-it-all birds here are just teaching the game mechanics. They're all also very high. <laughs> I like their square eyes. Hmm. Well, the tower's still here. I don't see any workers. It should be done by now, right? Yeah. It's been 400 years. Well, down here it looks about in the same condition, only they blocked off the entrance. If only we had something that could blow it up. Spoilers, bombs don't blow that up. No. Spoilers again, there's bombs in this game. Well, big shock. Oh dear. Well, this music is insane. Uh, yeah. This place. Ugh. This seems like a good place to call it. As McFly slowly loses his mind in preparation for what's coming next time. I want what the birds are having. 